Welcome to episode 2 of my Black Ops 3 Humiliation Challenge Guide. In this episode, the From the Grave Challenge. Get 25 Afterlife Medals, which is to kill an enemy after you've died. Even if you have this challenge complete already, you may still just learn a thing or two from this video. If you played Advanced Warfare, you may remember that this exact same challenge was incredibly hard to achieve. While it's not quite as difficult in Black Ops 3, it still can be completed faster and easier with certain tactics. First of all, let's discuss the mechanics of getting an Afterlife Medal. As with prior Call of Duty games, Afterlife kills can act very strangely. The ideal situation is that once you die, some piece of equipment you chucked out before your demise triggers and kills an enemy before you respawn. You're alerted of success by the Afterlife Medal that'll pop up. However, it doesn't always work like that, nor are you always shown the Afterlife Medal, which makes this challenge a bit confusing. For example, watch here as I cook a grenade and throw it at the enemy. He kills me, and then my grenade goes off and kills him. You'll see I get a Revenge Medal, but there's no Afterlife Medal, despite the fact that I clearly killed him after he killed me. However, after the match, you can clearly see I was rewarded with an Afterlife Medal. So you can't always rely on the Afterlife Medal to gauge whether or not it registers. Likewise, with some items such as the Hive, you'll get a kill quite a bit after you respawn. And again, no Afterlife Medal pops up. But you are still rewarded with a notch towards the challenge. Now let's talk about the best items to use to ensure you get these 25 Afterlife kills as fast as possible. The entire goal is to kill an enemy before you yourself respawn. And as luck would have it, some items are actually built to do the same thing. To ensure they aid you in your quest, you have to do one very simple thing. Watch the kill cam in full. Doing so extends the life of certain items. So allow me to demonstrate this as I go over which items can actually pull this trick off. If you saw my extensive guide on the Hive double kills, you'll know that the Hive pods are a candidate for this kill cam boost. Watch here as I instruct my enemy to skip the kill cam. The Hive pods first begin to fade out at about 2.017 seconds. Now this time I instruct him to watch the kill cam in full. Surprisingly, the pods first begin to start fading at 6.567 seconds. That's almost a 5 second difference, which can be incredibly helpful considering most enemies tend to linger around a body after getting a kill, whether that be by continuing their movement over the body itself or to stop and reload. This additional lingering time offers a huge advantage when it comes to securing afterlife medals. Now let's try the trip mine. Again, in this first scenario, I instruct the enemy to skip the kill cam. The trip mine first starts to fade at about 2.017 seconds, which was exactly the same as the hive pods. It's of no surprise then that when he watches the kill cam in full, the trip mine first starts to fade at 6.567 seconds, exactly as the hive pods. For deployable equipment, there's one more piece that offers these exact same times, and that's C4. However, despite this bonus, C4 is almost impossible to get an afterlife kill with. You cannot detonate a deployed C4 upon death. If you attempt to, it automatically skips the kill cam. Trust me, I tried everything. It simply cannot be done. With that said, it is possible to get an afterlife kill with C4. If you just so happen to double tap the C4 as you're dying, it'll delay just enough to explode in your enemy's face after you've died. Watch here as I cold cock this guy upside the head with my C4, die, then have the C4 explode and receive an afterlife medal. So doable, yes, but very difficult and not a good choice for this challenge. How about grenades? As it turns out, the frag grenade, the semtex grenade, and the thermite grenade are all viable for this challenge. Not only are they viable, but the kill cam trick does not apply to them. It doesn't matter if you skip or watch the kill cam, they'll persist for the same amount of time after you've died. The frag grenade time is variable since you can cook it. It could blow up immediately after you've died or persist for up to 2.8 seconds, depending on if you've cooked it or not prior to dying. The Semtex Grenade, since it's not cookable at all, will last only around 1.45 seconds after death. But it can still be considered useful since you can stick someone, let them kill you, and then instantly be rewarded an Afterlife Medal. Now of these three grenades, the Thermite is the best. It'll persist for up to 4.85 seconds. And again, this is regardless on whether or not you watch the kill cam. What makes this the better grenade option is that it's capable of damaging your enemy all the way up to the end. Whereas the frag or semtex can only damage an enemy with the initial explosion. As you can see here, I walk through a diminishing thermite fire and am still damaged, even at 4.05 seconds. The Tempest is also capable of achieving afterlife medals. If you happen to shoot an enemy and die while they're getting electrocuted, remember that the discharge can transfer between enemies. And should this occur before you respawn, you'll get an afterlife medal for it. Medals can even be rewarded in ways you might not have considered, such as from an assisted suicide. 
So watch here as I die after capping the B flag on Nuketown. This other enemy has the reaction time of a sloth and decides to shoot his launcher at my corpse, which results in a suicide kill for me as well as the afterlife medal since it happened while I was dead. Basically, you've got a lot of options to achieve your 25 afterlife kills. Let's talk about a few techniques with some of these options. If you decide to use the frag grenade, there's two techniques. The first of which doesn't work very well and is more luck based. Simply throw a frag grenade before engaging in a gunfight. Should you die, your frag may avenge you. The second frag technique is your best bet, and what I like to refer to as the poopers keepers method. Cook the frag grenade, bait an enemy nearby, and die. Upon dying, you'll shat out the cook grenade which will instantly detonate hopefully ensuring an afterlife medal. Finders keepers, losers suck. As I mentioned earlier, the Semtex is best utilized when actively trying to stick your enemy and then letting them kill you. I covered the sticky bomber challenge in the prior episode, so if you're struggling with that challenge, be sure to check the video out. For thermite grenades, these best work in either hardcore mode or objective modes. Since hardcore users can't take advantage of the equipment that linger if you watch the kill cams, using items that will persist regardless like this will help. For objective games, safeguard mode works wonders. If you chuck one or two thermites at the robot when you're defending, chances are enemies will run into them when attempting to escort the robot. And should you die after throwing these thermites, there's a good chance you'll kill at least one person. Likewise, when the robot is getting close to the base, you'll want to throw thermites at doorways where enemies will be trying to get through to help escort. The fact that Flak Jacket doesn't seem to counter thermite grenades is also a huge benefit. I found that the trip mine coupled with the hive specialist are by far the best options. And this is due to their set it and forget it method. If you couple in the fact that the hive pods are very hard to escape, you've got a real good shot at getting an afterlife medal should you die. And if you don't care about your KD, you can use the trip mines as an aid in a gunfight. What I mean by that is, throw a trip mine at them as soon as they start shooting you. By the time you drop from their bullets, the trip mine should have set and deployed, hopefully resulting in a kill. If you do care about your stats, then you can attempt to safeguard your own death by anticipating it. For example, watch here as I enter this tight hallway. Before rounding the corner, I deploy a trip mine. I'm anticipating my own death. Should I round the corner and come face to face with an enemy who somehow defeats me, he'll then traverse right into my trap, resulting in an afterlife medal. The same thing can be done in objective game modes such as hardpoint. Throw a trip mine in a hardpoint your team currently controls. Chances are the enemy will attempt to overtake the hardpoint and your trip mine may reward you with an afterlife kill. Likewise, in Kill Confirmed, if you plant a trip mine right at your feet as you await an enemy, chances are if they kill you, they'll go for your tag, resulting in a trip mine explosion to the weenus. Lastly, you can couple the shock charge with any of these trip mine tactics to help ensure a kill. If you've never tried this combo before, it's highly effective. The shock charge will always activate first, essentially freezing your foe in place, and then the trip mine will trigger. As long as they don't have flak jacket on, this will result in a kill. Now for the hive, you can just deploy it as you normally would. And then should you die, just be sure to watch the kill cam in full to take advantage of the additional 4.5 seconds of deploy time. However, you can also do a technique that can 100% guarantee you an afterlife medal. As far as I know, this is the only tactic that will always result in an afterlife kill. So upon getting the hive, find yourself an enemy and spray the shit out of them as they're shooting you. While it's true you'll definitely die in this scenario, so will they. I definitely took advantage of this suicide-like technique for my own 25 afterlife kills. Lastly, I wanted to put to rest a myth that's been circulating around involving search and destroy. I've seen the argument countless times. Someone will mention that deployed items last until the end of a round in search and destroy, and then someone else will chime in and say no, that's not true at all. So let's test this theory. I'll use both the hive and the trip mines. After deploying all of these, I instruct my enemy to kill me. Now we'll spectate from his perspective. As you can see here, all my hive pods as well as the two trip mines are lasting well beyond the 6.567 seconds we concluded earlier. Thus, it's 100% confirmed that any deployed piece of equipment will persist the entire round in search and destroy after you've died. But what happens if an enemy dies by one of these? Does it still give you an afterlife medal? To test this, I instructed my enemy to die by one of these trip mines. After the game, I checked the after action report and confirmed that this method does indeed still give you an afterlife medal. And that makes Search and Destroy a great game mode to play for this challenge. Just try and hide your hive pods or trip mines so that they won't easily be destroyed. And that should do it. Achieving 25 afterlife kills may sound difficult at first, but after seeing all the different options at your disposal, as well as tactics to correctly utilize them, you'll likely finish this challenge in no time flat. If you want to increase the duration of some deployed equipment such as the hive pods or the trip mines, watch the kill cam in its entirety. While it may hurt your pride to watch yourself die again in full, more often than not, you'll get the last laugh.